friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead with a pet peeve tea break. What is it about the month of July? What is it about the month of July that turns everybody's brain to overcooked porridge? I I don't know. Um, I've had a couple of bright spots in the last couple of days, so I'm going to focus on them. But I'm going to get my pet peeves out of the way first. Accountability. Okay? I just had my last battle with Wakefield Tim Hortons. For the last four times I've been there, they've either haven't had the food that I've asked for, which is on the menu, or they didn't understand what I was saying, or they got my order wrong, or all of the above. And yesterday was the final straw. When I went there after groceries to get a chili cheese fries and a cup of tea, and they didn't have any chili, and they didn't have any fries. At 5 o'clock on a weekend Friday, with the bumper to bumper traffic, they don't have the food. Who is running this place? You either need a bigger kitchen or better staff. And I'm voting it's pretty much the staff. So I was stuck. I was stuck in the drive through for 10 minutes without an order going through because I wasn't even going to order a tea at this point because the last time. We went, Briar and I. This is the yesterday was trip number four. Last time Briar was with me, and I ordered an extra large orange pico tea, one tea bag, two milk, uh, an ice cap for Briar, and I asked for a chili cheese fries. And they said, y "You want a poutine?" I said, "No, I don't want a poutine. I want fries with chili and cheese in a soup cup." And they went, "Just a minute, please." And they brought somebody else to the microphone. And they said, can I, you know, can I help you? And I said, I want a chili cheese fries. And they said, chili cheese fries. And I said, never mind. Just give me an extra large orange pico tea, one tea bag, two milk, and an ice cap. And I drove up to the window. And they handed me a large black tea with two tea bags in it. I didn't even look at them. I just looked at the cup and went, Extra large orange pico tea, one tea bag, two milk, please. So when I went yesterday and they had no, they didn't have the fries, they didn't have the chili. There's a 10 inch curb on one side with a guardrail dropping to a ravine. And on the other side is a 10 inch curb and then another six inches or so or something or barrier or something to get to the parking lot. So even if I was in my truck, which I was not, I couldn't have gotten out of there. I don't have a jacked up four wheel drive. If it was jacked up, I probably would have showed my angst and driven right over the curb and into the parking lot. But in this case, I was stuck. So that's my last kick at the can with Wakefield Tim Hortons. Um, apparently, we've got a new store up in Cantley, but it's in the other direction from where I travel. And I guess they took all of our train staff from Wakefield and moved them to the new Cantley store to make sure it's up and running right off the gun. And they filled in with Wakefield with a bunch of people who don't know what the, the hell they're doing. They really don't. I'm sorry. I've worked in the food service industry. I've worked in the service industry. If you got the weekend coming up or it's Friday in July, you want to make sure, ow, you want to make sure your staff has everything ready and then backups ready to go into the oven or fryer or wherever it's going so that nothing misses a beat okay nothing misses a beat and yes it's really good you know that you hire french speaking people but when you hire bilingual people to serve your english customers you got to make sure that they can speak properly and understand english okay because they moved the order window. They're not the order window, but the microphone with the the with the menu board. They moved it 15 feet back to to give the staff more time to prepare the food on time. I'm telling you, folks, it doesn't make any difference because that's the new in that's the new order board I used, and they still didn't get it. So Tim Hortons Wakefield. 
bye bye and uh, I will never go through I will never order at that window again unless it's I'm sitting in the passenger seat and I want nothing to do with the process so there's that it's accountability right and then there's my pool installers 10 days late you know why my pool was 10 days late? Because they hired a bunch of jackasses who will find any excuse to walk off a job when they don't want to work in the afternoon sun. It's the truth. My pool was supposed to be, it was delivered on the 29th and it was supposed to be installed between the, the 2nd and the 7th. Between the 2nd and the 7th. Today is the 21st of July, seven days to my pig roast, and my husband is now putting the last touches on the pool, and the fire department is coming today to fill it. Thank God. Because at least we have a week for the, the heater to work and for things to warm up in the water. And, oh, that's right. Do you remember me telling you that they said, oh, we can install it the 23rd or the 25th? Guess what? I just checked our weather forecast. It's supposed to rain all week. So I would not have gotten my pool installed. So, Trevi Pools Corporate, you really, the reason the, the, you know, the schedule kept falling farther and farther behind is because you got installers who really don't give a crap as long as they get paid. And it's people like us that suffer and people like corporate who suffers when they've got to return the installation fee. Right? So, I mean, if we don't hold people accountable to their actions, especially in the service industry, nobody, nobody will get any good service at all. I mean, the first time I went to complain at Tim Hortons at the window, Howie and Briar are like, oh, no, 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 Beth, don't. Shh, 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 shh. No. I ordered something. If they don't get it right, then I'm going to tell them about it. Because if I don't tell them about it, they're going to assume they're doing a good job, and they're not. Mem shows with the, the pool installers. But... The good news is that Trevi sent us our, our uh, installation feedback, and it came yesterday. I wish I had done an e-transfer because I had to put it in the bank machine. Of course, there's a hold on it till Monday. But Steve and Howie, and the video is coming, um, have been machines Thursday night, last night. They, they've been, you know leveling and tamping and putting in a drain and putting the felt bottom down and the walls up in the liner and now how he's attaching the skimmer and the the um the filter and the heater and all that stuff so there's going to be a video i don't know if you can hear the saw but i can hear it and uh so these you know it, we would never have gotten it but with the money that they sent back we're going to be able to pay Steve and whether he wants it or not, we're going to pay him and pay for the sand and the sealers and all the little, little elbow joints and things that, you know, would have come with the installers on their truck, but they didn't leave for us, you know, and, uh, so we're still going to have enough money left over that I, I made a phone call. And I'm going to plug them right here. I'm pretty sure it is um, uh, party rentals, party barbecue rentals .com in Canada or Ottawa, but I will double check and I will put it across the bottom here. I phoned them yesterday and said, please, please tell me you have a rotisserie barbecue that will hold a hundred pound pig. And they said, for when? I said, the 27th, 28th, 29th. And he goes, oh, yeah. He said, if you'd have phoned and asked for this weekend, he said, I would have told you we're out of luck. He said, but yeah. And so it was going to be really expensive for them to deliver it because it's in Canada. It's over an hour and a half away. But how he used to work there, so he knows the area really well. So he's going to pick it up Friday. Yay! So there's one less job that Daddy has to do. Okay? I mean, he can't do it all, right? I'm, wa I'm watching him and Steve work like nailers from the moment they get home from work until dark. And 
he's still got to dig a fire pit and all this other stuff. Why did she have to worry about building a barbecue at this point? So we rented it. Yay! Um, I'll be going Monday and buying huge, massive quantities of charcoal for that pig, pig, pig. I also have to make a vat of my um, bold and sassy barbecue sauce or barbecue sauce of some kind. So let me know if you want to see that on video. But <clears throat> before I found a place to rent the barbecue, uh, we went for a drive to a little place called Rupert where I saw a great big smoker barbecue at a place. And I wasn't sure if, if it was a restaurant or if they were renting. So we decided to go for a drive and find out. Now, Canada is a wonderful country. And Ontario and Quebec have some of the most beautiful bike paths and well-maintained bike paths. They're like little roads with dotted lines and sides and everything. They're so they're like a mini road, okay? And they go right through downtown traffic, Ottawa, and even up the 105 between Chelsea and and Wakefield. There's there's signs all along the 105 highway that's that say share the road with the bicyclers, and it shows bicycles people on bikes riding on the right side of the white line on the highway. Now it's telling us to share the road. Okay. But they don't, they don't sell them. They don't always do. They're supposed to ride single file within one meter of the, on the right side of the white line on the highway. And I've seen them close down the entire parkway between um, downtown Ottawa and Island Park for bicycle rallies, okay? So, I mean, it's a big, big thing here, the encouraging people to ride. And I have no problems with that. My son, before anybody gets angry at me, what I'm going to show you, my son rides four kilometers each way to his job every day. He has to ride on the highway. He has to ride on roads where there's no shoulders. He has to go through uh, a major intersection and he has to go, well, major intersection in the summer in Wakefield is, it's, it's major in the winter. And then he has to ride through uh, Wakefield and go down to his job. So I, when my son went to buy his bike, I took him to buy it and I made sure he got the helmet. He got the, the, the flashing lights and the, the headlight and, and all these things to make sure he was going to be safe. And my son knows the road rules. So when we went to get this barbecue, there was obviously a bike rally on the, I forget the name of the road, but I call it the Rupert Road. It's, it runs between Alcove and Ru Rupert. And there were bikes everywhere we're talking you know groups of like 10 15 20 bikes the problem and that's great they were having obviously a saturday rally or of some kind but the problem is that road has no white line no shoulders and a solid yellow line this is extremely dangerous people this is the third set of bikers that we've passed. There must be some kind of rally or something. But look at the twisty road. And look at, are they riding single file? No, they're not. Hell, one of them way up there is riding on the line. Three groups now. And I'm stuck riding behind these idiots. There's no shoulders on this road. It's a solid yellow line. And this is dangerous. There's bike paths in this country for a reason. Seriously. And yet we're supposed to share the road. Oh, that's right. They're getting over for me. Isn't that nice? Look at the solid yellow line. Look at the curve. Look at this for f***'s sakes. You know what, folks? I'm all for being healthy and seeing the country by bicycle, but this country has bike paths for a reason. Riding a rally on a shoulderless road with a solid yellow line is idiotic and dangerous. And to top it off, all these cars are parked on the side of the road here and people are trying to get around the cars as well as the bikes. Stupid.
This is what I'm talking about, people. This is what I'm talking about. I can't go around. There's no one meter. He's following on the side of the line. And then on my way home after my debacle with Tim Hortons, the traffic is really, really nuts. This is yesterday. And another pet peeve of mine is people driving in the passing lane, okay? There's a section on our highway where there is two lanes going this way and one lane coming this way. And the center lane, if you look at the, the dotted yellow line on the one side and the dotted white line on the other, the center lane is for both sides to use, coming and going, to pass when they're clear. Well, you can't use that center lane for passing if someone's driving in it. Now, I was driving Daddy's Hyundai Accent yesterday, thank God, because I wasn't, you know, when I'm, I get a little heavy on the foot when I'm driving the Dodge Ram. It's not that I'm heavy on the foot, it's just a more powerful vehicle. So I'm riding along this stretch, and I'm all ticked off, of course, because there's somebody driving in the um, center lane. And it is a... <laughs> It is a contractor's truck, like with the big dually wheels on the back, and then the big narrow high uh, tool trailer. And I can't figure out why he's driving in the center lane, and he's going some, and people are passing him on the right, which is another dangerous thing. You got to figure Highway 105 from Wakefield on north all the way to Manawaki is really the only straight shot to cottage country in that this this area and it is a crazy road you folks have seen it where guardrails are the only thing that's stopping you from a 15 foot drop to the rocks and river below or there's only 12 inches between the white line and the rock cut i mean it's not a safe road for idiots so I'm watching people pass this guy on the right and wondering what the hell's going on and so as i get up he gets out of that lane and cuts in front of me without signaling. And I'm like, yeah, there's one born every minute. And I, I don't mean suckers. Okay. So I'm watching because I know when we get to the end of this straight stretch, we're going to come to a curve and we're going to go down to back down to two lanes and there's going to be the King Burger. Now, I don't know how many of you remember me filming um, the devastation of a lumber truck which had spilled its load all over the highway next to the King Burger because that's a right angle turn okay and King Burger doesn't have sufficient parking so I know to slow start slowing down as soon as we come out of the the triple lanes and I look up and of course as we go around the corner all the car it's a corner and a hill so I'm seeing all the cars ahead of the truck that's in front of me and there's a truck behind me and everybody's brake lights are going on because of course there's at least one car that's got to go to the King Burger, right? But what I noticed was is that the trailer lights weren't working. The brake lights on the trailer ahead of me weren't working. So as we're driving, I get right dead nut center because sometimes you can get away with it if the trailer is narrow enough that you can see the brake lights on the truck. So I maneuvered so I could see both. No signals, no brakes on the truck either. Really dangerous. You've got bumper to bumper traffic. It's hot. People are impatient. And you've got a construction truck with a trailer on a, a contractor's truck with a trailer on it with no brake lights or signals on this highway. I'm telling you folks. Whether or not you're a good driver, you still need to maintain your vehicle. Now, he probably went to hook up his trailer lights and made a botch of it and unhooked everything or shorted something out. I don't know. But I was aware of it. Thank God I was aware of it. Because after we left that area and we came, we went from La Peche into Low Municipality. There is, used to be a 22 acre farm and the guy took 20 acres and he hacked it up into one acre lots and he's selling, he was selling them off. That's been going on for about 10 years, I guess. And there, okay, occasionally a lot gets sold and a, and a house gets built and there's like four of them down there now. And 
but this guy was turning in there. He had no brake lights, no turn signals, and the hot and everybody's getting back up to, you know, 55 miles an hour or 90 kilometers an hour when he suddenly breaks as if he didn't wasn't aware that that's where the driveway was he breaks and turns i almost ended up in his back pocket with the howie's little hyundai accent and the truck behind me the i think the only reason he saw it is because he's higher than me and he could see that the truck ahead of me had no brakes or no brake lights so i missed his bumper and this is me aware that he has no brake lights so I've been, I've been keeping a really close eye on him. I miss his bumper by that much. And thank God the truck behind me was aware because he missed my bumper by that much. And of course, all I could do was hang out the window and go, Get some brake lights, you idiot! But I mean, these are all little things that could add up into nightmare situations. That could have been a really bad accident and I would have been squashed between two trucks. And I probably never would have recovered properly. Between fibromyalgia and arthritis, there's no way I would have walked away from that accident in the shape I'm in now, which is pretty bad to begin with. So anyway. And last but not least of Bev's pet peeves. So we're talking to bicyclers to please share the road and follow the rules of the road. Because if we hit you, it's like hitting a pedestrian. It doesn't matter whether the bike people are at fault. The driver of the ve motorized vehicle is the one who's going to get at fault. You try and hit a pedestrian and get away with it. I don't mean try. I don't mean it that way. I mean, you know, it's like hitting a city bus in Ottawa. Even if the bus cuts you off when you're halfway up from in, in another lane, they don't care. They'll shove you right out of the way. And you're the one at fault. That's the way it works the 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 lesser vehicles and the lesser people or the bigger vehicles or the city owned vehicles all these things you know it doesn't leave a lot of room for us drivers to not be at fault for anything right so please bicycle people follow the road rules okay because it's just dangerous and last but not least oh and maintain your vehicles and folks if you're hiring people to do customer service train them properly before you release them on the unsuspecting public you have no idea how many customers you're losing because of their incompetence and i'm talking about the pool installers as well okay last pet peeve of the day litter bugs I'm one of those people who gets really, really upset. I live in a very beautiful country. Live in a bit. I mean, along with the bike paths and, and all these things, we are really cleanliness conscious. Okay? And I mean, the school, the, the local high school, does a thing every spring where the kids get out in canoes and they go along and clean up the riverbank of the Gatineau River. Before Earth Day, people scour the ditches, filling them with filling garbage bags with any litter that they find and putting them up on the shoulder of the road so that the on Earth Day or the day after Earth Day the truck can come by and pick up all the garbage. It's a community thing and it happens all over the place. So when I see a Facebook post of a young lady and I know it's in the US, but that doesn't matter. This is the attitude we have to fight against. Her Facebook name is Queen Litterbug, and her picture is a pair of mouse ears and a little mouse nose, and she's all cutesy wootsy. She does a film on her phone. There's, you know, you see from her phone that there's a little old lady. She had to be 80. Open up her car door and hand her back the trash she threw on the ground. And she said, take your trash home and put it in the garbage. Who do you think's going to clean this up if you don't? If you don't look after it yourself, you're going to destroy the, this is how the planet's going to get destroyed. And you know what her reaction was? This woman just opened my car door. I'd have done more than open your car door. I, would have, I wouldn't have handed you the trash. I would have flung it in your back seat. 
because one of our biggest pet peeves is our vehicles are always a mess. Why? Because we don't litter. Young lady, Miss Litterbug, Miss Queen Litterbug, you are an idiot. And on the topic of litter, last year or the year before, Tim Hortons, again, they used to have their garbage recycling and things, uh, bins, in the drive through so that as you were going up to get your coffee, you could drop, drop your empty coffee uh, cup in, from your car in the garbage. They removed them. Why? Because people were dumping their garbage from their car into the garbage can. Oh my God. They can't use the garbage can. They're putting garbage in the garbage can. Oh no, let's remove the garbage can. Do you understand where I'm going with this kind of mentality? It's idiocracy, folks. And if you haven't seen the movie, I suggest you watch it. It's supposed to be funny when in reality, it's scary as hell. This is the Miss Wolfie from our half acre homestead saying, if we are not responsible for our own actions, then who is? The entitlement generation. It's a scary place to be. Take care. God bless.